So on the pattern sheet here, we can see that we've got to add some borders to our giraffe. We've finished the applique, that block is all finished, and now he just needs a little black and white stripe border around him. So I've cut them to length because we didn't change the size of the background. We don't really need to remeasure. We know that we cut this um, background for the giraffe at 16 and a half, so we're going to cut those at the same size. And the same with these ones, they're a little bit longer because we're going to sew the sides on first and then these will go right the way across. So we'll be using a quarter inch seam allowance for all the stitching that we're doing. And just keep an eye on your quarter inch. When we're making a pattern like this sort of pattern where you've got uh, multiple borders and some of them are pieced, um, it starts mattering that your quarter inch is working so that the piecing all works. But the other side of that is too, that these little stripey borders that we're putting on can act as a little bit of a buffer and they can be adjusted if need be to make the size of the quilt top the right size each time you add, when you're ready to add the next border because that can matter with pieced borders. Uh, so we'll just keep going. We're just gonna use our quarter inch seam allowance. We're gonna sew our borders on and then we'll make the next border. So I've sewn the two sides on and now I'm just going to press those. So I'm going to press the seam in towards the border. So I like to press from the front, then I don't get those little tucks that can occur when you can't quite see the seam. And so I'm just going to press that over very simply. I'm sure you know how to do all this. And then I'll pop the top and bottom on so that he's framed all the way around. And because we cut these um, strips to go all the way across, that should now fit. And yes, that's looking like the right size. So I'll go ahead and stitch those on as well. Now, on the pattern piece, I've shown you how to, to construct the next borders. And they're just all short strips joined up. The strips are actually two and a half inches wide, but they're four and a half inches high. And I've done it that way because of getting the fabrics going the way I wanted them to go. Now we're going to lay them out um, so that we can see how they're going to fit. They should fit with all your seams that side there and I wanted this, the, the fabric so that the top of the fabric is coming in that way and I've got this one around the wrong way as well and we want the top of the fabric coming into the sides there and then when we make the top and bottom border because we're going to sew those on next and then we're going to do the top and bottom border and they have got squares of the dot fabric on each end uh, to give them the nice corners. So at the moment they're looking too short because we haven't sewn these on. And the same thing, the strips are running up and down. So I would put it so that the fabric is up the right way at the bottom part and up the right way for the top border as well. So it's just the side ones are just on the side but coming in from this side and this side is the top of the fabric. So I'll go ahead and get my borders on and then we're going to put another stripe border on as well beyond that before we start making the other pieced border. So I thought we'd go through now, now that their quilt has got all its borders to, up to date, we did the sides first and then the top and bottom, um, ready for the next stage. So the next stage is going to be this pieced border around here with the little white triangles around the squares that are on point, as they call it, when it's on its point like that, it's sitting on point. So um, I thought I'd show you how I do that. I've actually already made some of mine here but I thought I would show you how I went about that. So this is the actual finished block that we're after. Um, and so what we're starting with is some just some squares that we've cut, and then we've cut some smaller white squares. Now we need to draw, if you want to know where this is on the pattern, it's on this page here, and we've got to draw a line on the triangles and then we've got to sew them on and things like that. So the step-by-step -step is all there in the pattern. And so with one of our squares like this, but first of all, we need to draw our line. So on these squares that we've cut here, we need to draw a diagonal line. So I'm just using a mechanical pencil and I'm just popping the ruler from point to point and I'm just going to draw a line right on that diagonal. 
Now we're going to not need half of this because when it's sewn onto the corner of the bigger square we can we trim away some. So you may feel that you want to use this at a later stage for something. So I would probably go through at this stage and mark all my squares with a second line half an inch away from that first line. So I've drawn the first line on the diagonal and then I've placed the half inch line of my ruler right over the top of that diagonal line and drawn another line half an inch away. So I've actually got two lines on all my squares. Um, I've just got a couple more here to quickly do and then I'll show you how I piece those on. Uh, that second line and a second line of sewing is optional uh, but it makes the pieces quite usable afterwards. So for me that's a good option. I'm getting quite a collection of these pieces that I'm collecting and no doubt one of these days I'll do something with them. So in order to put the corners on to the squares, so this square here started out as a full size square like this one and we're just going to be putting the white corners on and trimming away. So with this here and with the lines that I've got drawn on here, so I want this diagonal line, the long diagonal, to go from corner to corner and the shorter bit goes in the bit that we're going to be trimming off. So I'm going to position those like that and I've already got these two positioned so that I'm now going to stitch on that line and we can chain piece these. So we'll go to the sewing machine and do that. So I'm going to sew on right along that diagonal line that goes from point to point of the white square. And then I'm going to continue on because there's a few of these to do when you do all of the blocks. Uh, and you, so you can chain piece them in these stages like this. So I'm ready to put the next one in now and I'll just keep on sewing. And the next one, and so it goes on. So I'll just do the three. And then because I want to use those pieces that I'm going to be trimming away, I'm now going to come back and go over the, the second drawn line, which is half an inch away from our first line. And the same thing, just stitch along quite merrily. I just bring that up a bit closer and just continue chain piecing. And this way I'm not going to be wasting those corners. You may have some other one thing that you want to do with them, or you may not want to use them at all. So they're all chained at the moment, so now they just need to be cut apart and then we're going to trim the triangles off the corners and so all the other four corners on as well. So now I've uh, pressed, uh, sorry, stitched my seams. I've done the two lines of sewing because I'm going to keep my little piece off the edge and now I've just got to trim away those before we do the next two. So we've done the two opposite sides and I'm just going to lay my ruler on so that my quarter inch in from the edge line sits right over that line of stitching so that I... I'm cutting basically between in the middle of the two lines of stitching that I've done or if you've only done one just quarter of an inch away towards the corner for that one and then you can actually just move the ruler across and just again because I've done the two rows of stitching if you've only done one you most likely will need to turn it round so that you've got that line to pop the ruler on and cut away so and trim those off now if you press those you find that you've got um, quite an array of little half square triangle squares ready for some unsuspecting project in the future. We don't need them at the moment. And then we're just going to press that out. So press the seams towards the triangle. we're going to come back and do exactly the same treatment with the other two corners on each of the squares and then again trim them and press them and so that all of your blocks are going to look like this. So all my blocks are now um, done ready for the border so you can see there's a diagram in the pattern that shows you how the borders go together so we're going to make the sides first so there's a string of them and keep Keep your fabrics up the right way if that matters to you so that when they go on the side of the quilt they're up the same way um, as the giraffe is and 
the same thing along the top and the bottom so that they're sitting upright along the top and the bottom. So there's a diagram here in the pattern that shows you how they go together. So we're going to make a, a row for the sides and then across the top and the bottom, the same thing, but we're also going to put some of the dotty squares in the corners for the top and bottom. So do the side rows first, put the sides on, then do the top and bottom with the corner squares in and put those on. And then we're going to come back and do another one of the little black and white um, stripes as well. So I'll go ahead and do that and uh, show you the progress as we go. So I've been busy making the borders and we can, I've made all four of them. So we're going to put the sides on down there and down here. And then I've made the top and the bottom, even though I don't need them just yet, till I've put the sides on because we just want to make sure that everything is up the right way and we're ready to go. And that's looking pretty good to me. So that's where the borders are going to go. And making sure that your blocks, your fabrics are up the, the way that you want them to be on all of these. And so that the fabrics are not upside down if you don't want them to be upside down and that sort of thing. And that's looking pretty good to go on there. So I'm going to stitch those on next. And then there's going to be another little black and white one that goes on the outside before we put our next border on. This little mini medallion is looking good. So this is looking fun. We've got the narrow borders on. We put them on sides first, then on top and bottom. So kind of everything's where it should be. We've just got one more border to go on the outside now. And in your cutting notes, I suggested that uh, that you cut the borders um, from the length of the fabric. This was so that when you came to this outside border on the sides, you had the fabric up the right way. This is very much a one way, one direction quilt. So I thought it would be kind of fun if we cut the borders for the sides that way. And then we've cut the strips for the top and bottom going across so that the fabric all seems to be going in the right direction. So now we just have to cut these to length. Um, so we can measure the quilt or you can work out what it was because we've just put a border on here and you know how long you cut those and just add in the little extra for the border top and bottom. Um, so we can then pop the sides on first and then in the corners we've just got these other little squares for the corners. So we can put those on the top and bottom borders like we've done before and then our quilt will be ready for the next stage of quilting and things. So measure, cut your sides to length, cut the top and bottom to length, add the corners to the top and bottom, sew your sides on, sew the top and bottom on. So here we have the quilt top all ready to go. We've got the borders on, all the fabrics are going in the right direction, which is always a nice thing. Um, it's pretty exciting to see it all come together. We've got this uh, happy little giraffe in the middle and he's got lots of friends wandering around in the jungle. So the fabrics have just come up so nice. They're just so delicious. And now we've got to baste it and quilt it and then bind it. So we'll get on to the next step.